Jimmy Douglas' story is interesting because the character that he portrayed, they portrayed him as a drunk, and he was a teetotaler. Right. In reality, right. he was, mm -hmm. you know, the, and the relatives were still around, reminding well, them. Well, mm -hmm. to be fair, though, they did have secondhand reports that the man did drink, and his family did wish for his reputation to be that he didn't drink. That's, <laughs> yes. They, 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 they I, I have, drink. I have another example as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but it's absolutely, it's on the line of what we want to talk about yes. here. Mm -hmm. uh, when do you take liberties with history to make yes. the story better? Mm -hmm. And is that liberty a license? And is that liberty uh, taking advantage of something? Yeah. Or in fact, is that something that the dramatist? The, the 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 more uh, uh, there was a more recent example of this uh, with Jason Sherman and his play as play about Marshall McLuhan at the mm -hmm. Tarragon Theater. It was pulled. Because Jason had uh, taken liberties and had uh, put a lot of uh, profanity into uh, Marshall McLuhan's mouths, and, and his relatives said, that's not him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So pull it. Mm -hmm. And he had to. And it's hard because ultimately, as an artist, you aren't trying to create a, a facsimile uh, or a c carbon copy of the human being, you're actually trying to create something dramatic that can reflect something truthful about that person. So, I mean, I have no idea what the real Elijah McCoy was like, but I sort of cull from the experiences of what people write about him, and then mm -hmm. I go, well, this is what I think the core of that person's essence is. And maybe Elijah, you know, I don't know, maybe he was a drunkard, and I, in my play, he's not. But maybe in real life he was, it doesn't matter. I, for my story, I think from history, what you can get is the essence of somebody, and I don't think, I don't think you can yeah. capture the real human being necessarily. You can't. It's 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 not possible. There's yeah. there's the truth, mm -hmm. then there's the historical record of the truth, mm -hmm. and then there's the theatrical interpretation of the historical record yeah. of the truth. Yeah. Re it's revisionist, and you yeah. can't not be revisionist. But each of you has written about history that's at least a hundred years ago. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So there is no generational mm -hmm. attachment to those people in the play. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. you wrote uh, uh, something based on 1940s or 1950s, mm -hmm. in which the children of those characters are very much alive, would that change the way you approach the characters? I would s seriously think of not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or so you go deep enough into history, so mm. you're not that's, you're not liable. That's or, exactly it. Yeah. Or what you do is you create uh, because I wrote is a. Is that good or is that bad? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think is, it's is that is that Mark uh, taking a liberty and giving himself freedoms for <coughs> worthy reasons or suspicious reasons, if you know what I mean? Uh, that well, he can I, play around I, with someone's I, life if they're if they've been dead for a hundred years. I sent I sent Michael a quote. Uh, Oscar Wilde said, "The only duty we owe to history is to rewrite it." <laughs> and exactly. <laughs> Thank you. From that from yeah. that point of view, yeah, yeah, I do take major liberties. It's not a question of accuracy. It's 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 more a question of truth, and you know, to to borrow my favorite person, Conscious Pilot, what is <laughs> what is truth? You know, what's the what, difference? What is act? truth on stage? Mm -hmm. Truth on yeah, stage, yeah. or when the actors are, are firing, when there's conflict, when there's mm -hmm. that's all I'm interested in. Yeah, you know, yeah, you do you do a, a thing to the to the record. Um, a, a really great example is uh, uh, Michael Hollingsworth, the, the Small Hats, the Village of the Small Hats. He's done you know the whole all of Canadian history, and he's done it really beautifully. But in a very broad way, he had the, the guts to put uh, John A. McDonald uh, like uh, just a total drunken <laughs> sot with a clown nose on yeah, yeah, yeah. drooling and throwing up, you know? And, and uh, you know, that's pretty insulting. But the moment he got to Trudeau and the FLQ, he ran into trouble. He ran mm. into trouble with the critics, he ran into trouble with the French press because he was portraying the FLQ as a bunch of yeah. murdering goons, right? Mm. And, you know, not the, not the heroes that they, some people think they are. Mm -hmm. So suddenly people's me memories of Trudeau circum circumnavigated what he was trying to do. He was still doing that really broad, sort of two-dimensional, clowny kind of bouffant, which I really personally like a lot. Like, I think it's so are you saying it's all right to twist or change or embellish uh, a person's uh, personality, but you cannot change names of movements. You cannot take political movements and say they actually were something else. Well, that's a different thing. I mean, portraying political movements on stage is, is something else than characters. I mean, I, I don't see the, the correlation. So you can be free no, with think, people, but you can't be free with history? Oh, I think, I, I think anything is fair game, and it's up to the, the audience to judge, yes. I think. And truth, like... So you can, sorry, you can change history then? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because yeah. history is, is revision. I'm missing this. Oh, history yeah. is revision. You read, it, you read a book and you think, so oh, that's, you can, that's you the way it was. So you can do a square and the tank shoots the man with the flower. Sure, yeah. You, if you wanted to write that play, sure. I mean, it, it, it depends on what statement you're making. 
I, I always bring up the, the Scottish play rule. Like, uh, William Shakespeare knew that he wanted to impress the new king, and instead of taking the sort of historical facts about that Scottish king, he, he all of a sudden had him consulting with witches. And because King James loved witchcraft, he loved studying it, and he loved, and that was, that was the big reason, and it worked. King James loved Shakespeare. He saw the play many times and said, this is a fantastic play. Of course, the, the family members of that Scottish person from that Scottish Richard, play. Richard III as well. <laughs> yeah. 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 Richard oh, III. yeah, of course. The, the but it doesn't matter. Or... And if you were a rel relative of Richard III, you'd be like, what the hell did you do? What? You can't say that about my granddad. Yes. But it, uh, it's a much more interesting play if all of a sudden, you know, the point about Tiananmen is people have a collective memory of Tiananmen. Yeah. They know exactly what happened, you know, as far as you could see from mm -hmm. what we're seeing, you know, on television. So that's, that's what was my point about Hollingsworth. Like the moment mm -hmm. he ran into Trudeau, suddenly people have their own memories of Trudeau. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, you're talking about the, the far past. You can, yes. you can play fast and loose mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and, and, uh, and even mythologize when mm -hmm. all those people. Absolutely. Uh, which and is really what he's doing. He's, he's, uh, it's satiric, but it's mythologizing. History itself has an audience. History itself is made by very, uh, very particular cultures and very particular times mm -hmm. to, to do very specific things. And we're, you'd be naive to think that, it, and I think we all understand this, that there is no such thing as that pure objective sense of history. It's all dictated by our culture, our language, and who we are, and our, the time period that we're in. And so when we write plays about history, we're a part of that flow and ebb of the river of history. And there's nothing we can do about it. There's, you can deny it. You can say, my play is objective history. But it's not. Mm -hmm. it's and then, later on, mm -hmm. what information do you need? And go after it. Because I'm, my, uh, the way I usually do it, I, suggest, I just read everything and, yeah. and tons of information and wonderful little interesting little facts. Like, well, did you know that his father was diabetic? Oh, I didn't know that. Well, let's put that in the play. What is, why? I don't know. I just want to put it in. And it's just yeah, you can be buried in facts. Yeah, you, can you can bury a play in facts. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You have to be so careful. So I'm reading something. I'm working on something now where I'm doing a lot of research about, about Pushkin and Pushkin's life, and 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 uh, Pushkin was this fascinating guy. But he he tried to write the play I'm writing about is about Pushkin's great grandfather, who was from northern Africa. He was this guy who was picked up somehow through the slave trade and made his way to um, uh, Russia to be, uh, to be in the court of uh, Peter the Great. Um, and uh, he was basically treated like a son by Peter the Great and was given lots of titles and stuff and became Pushkin's great-grandfather. And Pushkin himself tried to write a novel based on his grandfather. And I could see, as I'm reading Pushkin's novel, I can see him struggling with this very problem. Because what he wants to do is he wants to tell the entire world, my great-grandfather was a Negro, and he came from Africa, and he spoke like this, and he did these very specific things. But he, as, he, as he goes along in this novel, you realize that real life is not dramatic. It's kind of boring. It's, you know, it's like, yeah, sure, he's from Africa. Yeah, sure, he fought some battles and stuff. And then he got married and, you know, and stuff and had children. And it's just not, you know, it doesn't make for stirring drama. So you could see him struggling with whether I make stuff up. And then what was interesting, the great part about Pushkin's work on the Negro of Peter the Great is the stuff that he completely fantasizes about him, you know, fighting in Spain and, you know, going to these wonderful parties in France, which apparently his grandfather did, but he had no specific information about it. And then his, he, in the novel that he wrote, he had his grandfather having an illicit affair with, a, you know, some French, diploma, French uh, aristocrat's wife and wonderful little scenes about running in back and, you know, trying to, you know, the, the, she has a child by him and they have to hide the child and stuff. That's interesting. Did it happen? Probably not. No, probably not. And you could see, and eventually, I think he just gave up because it was just too hard. Because he wanted to tell the truth about his great grandfather, but also he wanted to mythologize him. You know. So, can you go too far? Yeah. What's too far in taking a historical character and spinning it in a way to to feed your story telling needs?